Welcome to Real Steve TV. I'll be your host, Steve. And thank you for joining us this illustrious evening. It's actually getting kind of late. As you guys know, uh, well, if you've watched some of my last videos or streams, uh, you know I'm working on a, a contest for, and I have to make a five minute and 55 second um, documentary and that's due February 10th <clears throat> so I have been hustling grinding in and out of game I spent um, several hours today getting footage and editing the documentary and uh, I want to put a lot of time and energy and effort into that so again, just heads up if like my screen, stream schedule's off a little or if I'm not uploading as many videos as I have been, it's because of that. Um, that's taking priority, of course. So apologies, but um, it's a really good opportunity for me. Archmagus, I feel that, brother. Bless your grind. I respect it. <laughs> What's up, Ark? I uh, commented on your, on your comment earlier i don't know if you read it yet but uh i hope you're right dude or is any is everything okay or is it just the uh just the uh regular old pressures of life or anything that uh you want to share well i saw it it was epic thank you you're welcome man i just i, I want to encourage you and my my viewers and people in general, as Archmage has just been overworked and tired and hard to keep up with everything. I feel you, brother. I feel you, and um, that's why we have to tap into the source, and the source is Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. Um, and that's why I'm a Christian. One of the many reasons why I'm a Christian. I I've come to a point in life where I realize, like, oh, I can't do it on my own, Lord. I can't, and there's no amount of money, no amount of youth, no amount of fame, no amount of material goods that will get the job done. And I'm not saying there's like anything wrong with any of those things, but us sinners tend to put our hope and faith in things and stuff, and even our own selves before we do in God. Um, so I just, I want to encourage you, Ark, to just press into the Lord and read the Bible, pray. One thing about being a man that it's taking me a long time to learn and I still have work to do in this area, but true good men, they do not live their lives based on feelings, you know? And uh, I spent a lifetime living my life based on feelings and that was directly connected to my problem with addiction and drinking and smoking too much weed and drinking too much and jumping from girl to girl to girl a part of me just wanted to feel good all the time to the extreme and we can do that on all sorts of different levels dramatically big levels minor levels whatever it is and as you start to grow up and you start to get more mature and especially as you hopefully get more mature in Christ, you start to realize, like, it's not about my feelings. And again, you can tap in directly to the source, God himself, and be like, Lord, help me. You know, almost every morning when I wake up, I, before I consciously start praying, praying, I like, I kind of already start praying literally as I'm like waking up and you know how you start to toss and turn and you're like, oh, it's coming. I just, I always say, help me, God. Help me today. Help me today, God. I need it. Archmagus, I'm right there, too. I'm with you there. I think you're right, too. I need to reconnect with the Bible, the physical book, and ruminate on it. Dude, absolutely, bro. And Man, it's just, it's our sinful nature, man. It's our doubt. We think, and I, may, I can't speak for you, but... I, I do this all the time. Oh, what's going to matter if I get down on my hands and knees and pray? God already knows what I'm going to say and this and that. And what does it matter if I read a few passages of the Bible and, and sit there and think about it? 
It's like, but look, look at all the other things we'll spend hours doing. Wow, we have no problem grinding in this mindless game. And God's like, man, if you just gave me 10% of what you give, wow, we'd be good here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, but really, I mean, it's sad. And I know a lot of Christians that they don't read their Bible every day and they don't wholeheartedly pray every day. And as a matter of fact, like ever since I started streaming and uploading, a part of me has put my, my faith into this this dream and this goal. And again, there's nothing wrong with having a dream and a goal. But if that dream and goal comes before God, then that is a problem. Um, and I need to make a better commitment at doing my quiet time. And, and again, think of it just as like, whatever you know you can commit to. Like, it would be silly to say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to start doing an hour-long Bible study by myself. You know, I'm going to pray for 30 minutes, and then I'm going to read the Bible for 30 minutes. And, you know, it's like, no, no, just start with five minutes and say, I'm going to do that every morning for you, Lord. Um, it's the first fruits of our lives, our energy, our time. You know, if we direct our mind immediately to God, the Bible, Christ, he sees that, you know. And then maybe after a month of five minutes, you can step it up to, all right, it's time to start doing 10 minutes. Because the Lord is like any other thing in life. Once you start to, to feed on it, the appetite grows more. And you're like, man, five minutes was great. 10 minutes will be really good, you know? Archmagus, I dedicate the first half hour of every day to God. I wake up and listen to my hollow app or I'll listen to a 20 to 30 minute devotional. I'm trying to keep him first place. Amen, Ark. That's all you can do. And uh, keep doing it. You know, like I said, when the, the battle seems the darkest, keep doing it. And I, I don't know. Um, well, now I know an idea of what you do. But I would suggest making sure that you you pray. You know, you pray to God and you can talk to him just the way you and I talk or how you talk to your wife He's a person. I feel like the Holy Spirit showed me that recently. And he's like as real as like your friend is, you know, and you sit there and talk with them about deep things. That's as real as I am. I am right there with you in this, you know, and Jesus, the Bible says, you know, he sticks closer to us than a brother, man. And I just love that because I, I need that. Oh, man. We're getting real on Real Steve TV, ladies and gentlemen. And that's where my heart is. Um, I love the World of Warcraft. You guys know that. I love it so much. My favorite game. I spend a lot of time in this crazy world. But more than World of Warcraft, I love Jesus. And I love pursuing him. And it's been really hard. And I've fought with God for many, many years of my life. And it... Yeah. All I can say is, guess what? In the end, he wins. That's it. I think I'm hard-headed and stubborn. I, I can promise you guys, God is more hard-headed and stubborn than any one of us. And when you commit to him, when you committed to him, maybe it was a year ago, 10 years ago, when you were a little kid, if you meant and believed it in your heart, good luck getting away from God. Because if you declared your love for him, he loves you, and he'll never let you go. And he might let you go through some awful things to wake you up, but God will never let you go. It's like joining a gang, but worse. And in this gang, you, you can't get out, dude. Blood in, blood out. Like that movie, but worse. And that's a pretty bad movie. Archmagus, I so need to pray more. And you're right. It's hard to when you're like, God already knows what I'm going to say. And he knows what I'm BSing myself. And that's that's the hard part. Taking off the mask making a real honest look into your heart, looking an honest look into the mirror, because we all do it. We lie to ourselves, man. It's, I see it all the time. The more that I s slowly am coming out of the dark, the more I start seeing the dark in others. And I don't mean this in that self-righteous, hypocritical Christian way of like, you're in the dark, you're evil, you're going to hell, you're a sinner. I mean it now in a loving way and I'm like, oh my gosh, look how many people are operating on lies and fibs and it's like rare to find a genuine straight up honest person anymore.
Like a lot of people's default is to fib, tell a half truth, exaggerate, avoid the question, be passive, be passive aggressive. And God doesn't want us to be like that, you know, and so we can start to to take on that mantle of responsibility of like, you know what, I got to get right because that's going to help me in just being an open, honest person. Because if you're hiding all these things, then you can't walk into a room with confidence, really. You know, you can't shake someone's hand and look them in the eye with confidence because there's this thing happening spiritually, mentally, psychologically, where you're wearing this, these chains, dude, this bondage. The Bible calls sin chains and bondage. And there can, there's a million sins, all sorts of stuff, man. Again, I, it doesn't have to be addicted to pot, addicted to booze and jumping from girl to girl to girl like it was with me. It can be little things in your heart, in your mind, where people from the outside might look at you and be like, that guy's totally normal. And as we all know, there's no one normal. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We all want to be viewed as normal and we all want to feel normal. But let's face it, guys. Nobody's normal. And I, I believe you can be more close to normal and more far away from normal. Right? A serial killer, that's pretty abnormal. Right? A guy who uh, goes to work every day, pays his bills, doesn't cheat on his wife, doesn't beat his wife, doesn't drink himself to death. He's, pre he's pretty normal. You know what I mean? It's like a spectrum, but at the end of the day, none of us are normal. You know, we're all dealing with stuff. Archmages, praying usually shows me to myself, like holding a mirror up to the things I'm uncomfortable about, and I need that. The struggle for normality normally isn't such a struggle. <laughs> and and that's the other thing. We go through our ups and downs. We're, we have some good runs along the way, and we're feeling good, and we're walking close to the Lord, and... We're going to church, whatever. We're doing our Bible study. We're doing the things that are right, and we're in the rhythm. And then we fall off, and we slip up, and we go back to that behavior, that sin, that pattern. And I just want to encourage you, keep fighting. Um, I think it's in Psalms or Proverbs. It says, the man of God falls down seven times, and he gets up. The wicked man falls down, and he is consumed by chaos. And back to this soldier metaphor, man, like us Christians, especially us Christian men, we are soldiers in a war. I, I hate to break it to everyone, to burst that bubble of I'm going to have a happy, normal life. We are in a war, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the ironic part that the Lord showed to me in the last, I don't know, six months, year. It's more freeing to face the war and face that I am a soldier in this spiritual battle. And when you finally accept that truth, it's freeing. Do you know that? And you're like, oh yeah, and it is going to be this way. And I am going to suffer and I am going to struggle and I am going to have losses. But it's like an honor to be like, but I'm going to fight, Lord. That's sick, dude. Archmages, I am going to keep fighting. We are totally soldiers in a war. We are, man. And again, the Lord knows how much we can handle. Like the Bible says, the Lord will never give you anything that he knows you can't handle. And sometimes, dude, in my darkest moments, I'm like, I'm like, thanks, Lord. You must think a lot, awful lot of me because, like, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure dealing with a lot. God puts us through these trials because he knows we can overcome them. He believes in us. Amen. But I would also say more so, it, it's it's us, we got to believe in him. And back to the prayer thing about like, he already knows what we're going to say. Here's the funny thing. God's like, but do you know what you're going to say? About a year ago, the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke this into my heart. And he said, of course, I don't need you to pray for my benefit. I'm God. Do you know what I mean? You're not going to take me off of my throne. You're not, you're not going to... Make me not be in control of the world and the universe because you don't pray. The Lord spoke to me, son, you need to pray because you need to pray for you. You need help. You need strength. You need guidance. You need direction, not me. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if I go a day without praying, is God in heaven like, oh, no, Steve didn't pray. What are we going to do? All hands on deck. 
no, like a good father, he's like, he'll be back. He needs me. He needs me. Oh, man. So, that's how we start. Dude, that's a good... We're 15 minutes into this stream, dude, and we haven't <sighs> talked about WoW. It's because we're talking about something more important than WoW. You're watching Real Steep TV. Thank you.